Wait, I got it back here. Let me show you guys this real quick. Gosh, come on! Oh my gosh! All right, there we go. It's Simona's the detailer's choice booster cable, 16 feet tangible proof cable, 200 amp clamps, six gauge. And I saw online for a one gauge, 1200 amps. It's just better than this, 20 feet and everything. And this was 15 bucks. And I mean the the cord. Don't get me wrong, six gauge. Look how thick that cord is the smaller the gauge if you don't know the bigger and there you got a nice diagram on how to hook it up for vehicles with a negative grounded vehicle and a positive grounded vehicle got all the instructions and everything safety precautions and stuff and yeah this is actually a very nice product for a regular car but see being that i have a truck and well i like to go over the top on everything basically everything that has to do with just bigger and better i guess i'm probably going to end up returning this right now and then going with the bigger size the one gauge because that just makes more sense for me i want to have something big obviously you can get a zero gauge but then you're running up 100 bucks for a pair of jumper cables i don't think that's really necessary how often am i really going to use this so i figure you know one gauge is probably going to be good enough for me of course so i can make it myself and then weld them to the clamps and it's a lot cheaper and more durable to do it that way right on the forms and everything but I'm just not going to waste my time to do that. I'm just going to buy these one gauges. It's probably going to be good. Last time I did jump a vehicle, I didn't even use these. But here's the thing when it comes to jumping vehicles. If you have a relatively new vehicle, you have a ton of electronics in your truck. And especially this. I mean, 2013, that's pretty new. You have a lot of electronics in here. If you want to be the hero, in most cases, it's not going to be a good idea because you have a lot of electronics in here. If you result in a shortage to your vehicle, you could really break something, let's say the ECM or something, kind of screwed. That computer in your vehicle is screwed, you're going to be end up paying at least a thousand bucks. So it's not really worth it. That's at least how I'm seeing it, and that's what people on the forums are saying. You don't want to destroy your vehicle. So here we go, getting in on the left side, close the extended cab first. If you guys have a truck like this, do not close the passenger side first. Always close the extended cab first. Not only because it doesn't make sense, but you'll also, you might break the one panel off. Trust me, it's happened, and you'll also chip paint. Beautiful sunny day, I can't believe I was gorgeous it is let's start her up oh yeah man oh hello This is pure hard rock. I'm sorry, I just cannot get over how beautiful these new Fords are. I mean, a lot of you guys on the channel, I noticed comments that you guys are against Ford, and that was close, but holy cow, but I just love the new Ford look. Just, oh my gosh. So tall and just futuristic looking. But trust me, anything else, any other body style, 1500s, the older Super Duties, I mean, I'm, I mean, I think they're cool and all, don't get me wrong, I think they look really nice and everything, but Super Duties, man, it looks really, really good. And honestly, I'd probably only ever buy heavy duty trucks, but of course, we do have some nice diesel engines coming to 1500s now. It makes the decision tough on whether to really get a 1500 or then a Super Duty, heavy duty, whatever. <laughs> I'm here at the Chevy dealer and I'm just checking out these new trucks and I mean these 2500s man check it out if I got a new Chevy man it would have to be one of these 2500s whether it be a diesel or not oh my gosh one of the things I love is that 
they just have a, such a nice interior and i wonder why they took the handle off of the bottom because in my silver i have to reach down farther and i guess they don't do that now they kind of have it a similar setup as the ford and rams where it's just a normal handle to get it open so we got a d-max here dually got some utility bed and a dump bed look at that i've never seen a dump bed so clean i didn't know they made them so have such a nice finish to them how much do they want for dually? 66 thou. That's actually not that bad. I think they make you pay more for the extra wheels. <laughs> so the main reason I'm actually here is because I wanted to just look at the interior of these trucks. Really pick out which one has the best one. Yeah, here's our 15 under work truck. Looks like they put the handles on the regular part of the door. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you. Got the handle right here. So I kind of like that design better. I don't know. Oh yeah, man. Right here, 2500 HD D Max 2018 2500 four wheel drive Peru cab 64,000 standard vehicle price 46. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a lot of room in the back. Nice crew cab, paint match handlebars. Got that giant obnoxious exhaust. What is that, five inches probably? Crazy. Oh my gosh, man. It's just so nice. I just love it so much. I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just so flat. I love a flat dash. I know the, in the Ram, it's just not a flat dash. This is flatter than my Chevy, actually. The interior just amazes me every single time. It's just, it's, it's it has so much, but yet it's simple. I just, I want a simple interior, flat enough dash so I can let this camera sit on it, and it's perfect. Here we got one. This is just the 6.0 Vortec gas, Vortec gas engine, 46,000 standard vehicle price, 40. So not very far from the standard vehicle price, obviously being a work truck. This is basically the standard. I don't see what actually more could be, but damn, it looks so sick. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you remember I drove one of these a while ago. I was driving it for a couple days through the 4th of July, actually. It was beautiful outside. Took it to a cool off-road spot, and even the interior in these, man, I don't even mind those. You'd think, you'd think they give you the black interiors. I guess the grayish ones are cheaper, but I, I feel as if this would show dirt more than a black interior. There we go, spray-in bed liner. Here's the underneath, the standard axle back here, not much axle support, but still gets the job done, gotta love it. I love these trucks, look at that, oh my gosh, never even noticed this, oh my gosh, oh no way, the drive shaft is painted black from factory, I had to do that myself in the Silverado, it's factory black, look at that, four tens, four tens, are you serious? You could probably run 36, 37s and be okay with that. I didn't even know they put four tens in these. This is a good truck to buy right here. That factory black bumpers, man, they got it all here. <laughs> and here we go. Now we got the top of the line over here. Nice fancy chrome rims. The moon roof, that's what I'm looking for. They got the moon roof in the inside. These interiors, man. Gosh. I just feel as if it's more flat. I feel like it's got a more of a Jeep type interior opposed to mine where it's more rounded toward the dash this is so flat and square up there it's so nice they really outdid themselves look at that we got a black badge and then we got this nice 2018 1500 oh yeah and here we go. We got a vehicle price of fifty thousand for this. It's three four twos. Terrible. You can only run thirty threes on that, and even that's not ideal. This is an eight speed auto, though, so that's good. It's got a five three in it. So you can pay fifty for this, or buy that base model work truck with four ten gear ratios, basic interior. Don't really need much. Has the heavy duty front end, better, bigger and better axle and frame. I would have to go with the heavy duty truck. Here with this brown 2018 2500 four wheel drive crew cab and it's got the heated back window it's nice sometimes when you need to melt the snow off usually nothing happens back here but it has happened to me this year so that's actually a nice touch and i'm not a big fan on chrome rims but these i don't know why if it's just because of how reflective they are and how how much of an angle it is because that's like a 90 degree angle look at that that is that comes right there that these rims are actually very nice i would run these if i was planning on keeping stocks if, but if they made these in black, don't get me wrong, I'd still take those. So it looks like they got a wax job going on the frame. It's sticky. 
I don't know, I kind of got some dirt on my hand. I didn't. I never knew they went with wax on the frames. Usually it's kind of just flat. Maybe they finally changed the wax, I don't know. But these things are still corroding. Even the shock, the Rancho shocks, those are Rancho shocks in there. Those are corroding on a 2018 already, and then we got corrosion there. IFS suspension on this. So this is a 2018 diesel. Where do they put the, do they have it, the diesel exhaust fluid? Z71 package is $500. Twin tube Rancho shocks, underbody shields, hill descent control, door sill plates, unique Z71 grill, and Z71 emblems. So this is a Z71 grill. Gotta love it. Notice how they had to throw unique in there. Unique. Unique Z71 grip. Oh, yeah. So what I'm noticing is that some of these trucks have antennas and then some of them don't. And I'm also noticing that the work truck trucks don't have fender liners in the rear still. I thought it was a standard now for these trucks. Apparently only some of them have it is what I'm seeing here. And then not even all of them have antennas. The pistol